Yes, folks, it's Tales uh, from the Jails here with John G. Sutton. Please do like and subscribe. It's down there, folks, and a link to my book. Hey, if you've not read my book, why not? Hey, I've just written chapter, th volume three, volume three. That's what I've been doing. That's why I've been missing, folks. I've been writing, assiduously applying myself to writing. Yeah, so it's quite a lot of words. Anyway, it'll be out very soon. It's with the publisher now. I'm waiting for his views. Anyway, there we go. HMP Manchester Prison Officer Volume 3. Today we're going to talk about Rwanda. Yes, folks, Rwanda. Of course, now the Home Office has realised how we're going to get these buggers on the plane. They ain't going to go, are they? You know, you can't say, uh, would you step this way, sir? Yes, Um there, there will be uh, refreshments during the flight, and then you get off into Rwanda and you're straight into the jungle. Jungle. Uh, they aren't going to like that. So, what do they do? What does the Home Office? What plan has the Home Office got? I'll tell you what they've got. They have decided that they're going to use prison officers to train their staff to bundle inmates onto planes against their wishes. How are they going to do that? Eh? Uh, you, come here. Get on that plane. You know, like, like that. That's pretty much what, what you do anyway, isn't it? You got to, you, what you do is you use, uh, you use your hands. You, know, you, know, you, you actually get your hands like that, you get your hands on them, snatch them, arms up the back, and march, frog march them up the steps. I mean, it's it's not rocket science that you know, Home Office, Mister Chalk. Are you paying attention? What you do is you do what they used to do in the sixties and seventies. You hire the biggest psychopaths in Britain. That's what they used to do. I mean, <laughs> I know because I worked with the recruitment team doing the medicals. And I said to the one of the chief officers in charge of the recruitment team, what exactly are you looking for? Because I knew, you see, there were some very strange prison officers in the, in the service that I knew. I thought, how the hell have they managed to recruit these maniacs? So I asked, I said, what are you looking for? And he said, well, I'll tell you the truth. He said, we're looking for the biggest psychopaths in Britain. And that's what they wanted, because that's how the system worked in the 60s, 70s and early 80s, right up to the point where they took Strange Ways roof off and smashed it to bits. That's what happened. That was the, that was the catalyst that changed the entire system. Smashing strange ways to bits because it was a notorious screw's neck. Now, a screw's neck, for those of you who don't know, it, it's a jail where the actual staff are in complete control. So that if you kick off on the landings, then it isn't more than a few seconds before you go flying up in the air, four or five big boys run you down the landing, throw you into an empty cell physically rip off all your clothes, shred them off, don't bother on buttoning the bastards, <whistles> shred is the full Monty, and then you get to meet the school bully. That is how it works, that's how a screw's neck works, and that's what happened at Strangeways and, and the block. I'm not saying it's right, but I mean, listen, if you're an inmate and you want to fight, then go for it. That's what I say. Go for it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, i never seen anybody win, yeah, in including big buggers. I mean, seriously big ones. There was one guy called George Wilkinson. He must have been about six foot seven. He was something built like Billy Tyson Fury. Took about half a dozen of us down on the floor, into the cell, jacksy full of largactyl, Never the same since. Seriously, never the same. For reasons that are best known to he that is above. <laughs> or he that is below, eh? 
You never know, do you? Mm. Also, we had that maniac, what was it, Paul Sykes. He thought he was better. He used to go on television, didn't he? I spent my life slapping screws. They don't like it, you know. And slap any screws at strange ways. I know, because I was the guy that injected him. And uh, he was kind of quiet after that. So believe me, that's what the Home Office is planning for the people who they're going to send to. It's a nonsense idea, an utter nonsense idea. That's no way to treat human beings, bundle them onto a plane and flirt them off to the middle of darkest Africa, is it? Come on, I mean, this is this is Britain, yeah. This is not the Third Reich. Also, believe this or not. Now you check this out. There, there's a bill going through Parliament at the moment that is going to make it unlawful for people to sleep rough on the streets. What are they going to do? And listen, one of the penalties that they've got is is a fine of two and a half thousand pounds. Fine you two and a half thousand pounds for sleeping rough on the streets. If you got two and a half thousand pounds. Are you likely to get yourself a cardboard box and tuck yourself down in bloody marble arch? Yeah? Uh, or, or, or on the back streets of Euston Station or whatever. Give over. Are they out of their mind or what? You can't find somebody two and a half thousand pound who hasn't got a pot to piss in. It's just ridiculous. Hey, and, and also you can get thrown into prison. Listen... When I was at Strange Ways, there used to be people round about, it used to start round about the end of November, early December. They'd go into Manchester with a brick and put the shop windows in, deliberately to get before the magistrates and sentenced to like three months, maybe six months in Strange Ways, so they could come in over Christmas out the cold. Hey, hey, the jails ain't no deterrent. They seriously aren't. And the people who are uh, career criminals, they expect to be in prison. The grandfather's been in, the dad's been in, the mum's been in, the sister's been in, the brother's been in. If you don't go into jail, you're not joining in the game, are you? Absolute. I just can't believe it, can you? I mean, what are they thinking about? This is the 21st century. This is Tales from the Jails. And I'm telling you, jail don't work. It might have worked 100 years ago. It might have worked 50 years ago. But it don't work now. We need to think about something far more intelligent to deal with people today. I mean, we've got problems. A lot of the prison population are in there because they're hooked on drugs. That was never the case 50 years ago. I mean, they might have been hooked on tobacco and whiskey and whatever like that, but they hooked on cocaine or meth, methadone or whatever it is. Well, they are, they are there. Crystal meth, that's the one, isn't it? Yeah. That'll, that'll do your brain in. I've never tried it in myself. Seriously. Anyway, it's that time of day, folks, and that's what I've been doing. I've been writing my book. <coughs> Sounded a bit like an alarm bell, not the song, dinger. But listen, I haven't got my poetry book here, so I'm going to recite you a poem off the top of my head. Baldy head, by the way. See, that's why I wear my hat. Baldy head. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to read you a, um, recite you a poem. Not read you a poem. This is uh, Shakespeare's Sonnet 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Uh, this is from memory, by the way. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's lease hath all too short a date. Oft times too hot the eye of heaven shines, And often is his gold complexion dim. And every time from fair, some fair declines, By chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer 
shall not fade, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest, as long as men can see and eyes can see. So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. There you are. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Sonnet 18, William Shakespeare. I sincerely hope you like that. Tales from the Jails, folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yabba dabba doo.